What if I told you there was a feature within DaVinci Resolve which I use in pretty much every single project? A feature which can help keep your timeline tidy, which of course makes for faster and easier editing, help you to create great looking face cams in a jiffy, animate multiple things quickly and easily, and even allow you to create some really cool effects with very little effort at all. Well, what magical feature is it I talk of? It's the simple compound clip. Never heard of them? Well, let me explain. But first, I just need to let you know about this video's sponsor, Squarespace, the all-in-one solution for creating a website and running an online business. So what is a compound clip? Well, simply put, a compound clip is like a little box or a little container on your timeline which you can just use to put things in to make your life a little bit easier. So how exactly do they work? Well, check out my timeline here. I've got a PNG, a title, and then a solid color. Now, of course, if I wanted to move them, I could highlight them, but it'd be really easy for me to accidentally misalign them or move one without the other or something like that. So instead, we can turn them into a compound clip. To do it, all you need to do, highlight the things that you want, like so, so I've got all three highlighted, right click, and then from the menu that pops up, the top option, new compound clip. You'll be asked to give it a name, so I'm just gonna call this Mr. Alex Tech logo, and then hit create. And then on your timeline, you'll see we've got a Mr. Alex Tech logo compound clip, and I can just move this one single clip wherever I want. Now it's also important to note that in my timeline, I now have this. This is a Mr. Alex Tech compound clip. We know it's a compound clip because it's got this little icon in the bottom left hand corner. I can delete this from my timeline, but my compound clip will still stay within my media ball. So I can grab it at any point and bring it down onto my timeline and it's got all of my three individual elements, the background, the title, and the logo. But can you edit it? Yeah, you can. You can open your box up at any time, put more stuff in it, take stuff out of it, or just rearrange it. Either on the compound clip on the timeline itself or within your media pool, simply right click and then you've got the option to open in timeline. Give that a click and then you'll open up a new timeline. This is inside our box. This is inside our compound clip. So from here, we can do whatever we want. If I wanted to change this logo, let's zoom this in move this around, we just treat it like any other timeline. We could add some more stuff, so let's just move this up. Let's go grab another title, we'll just bring this in, we'll leave that there, maybe move this over, do whatever we want to this compound clip. Now to get back to our main timeline at the bottom, you've got basics, which is the name of my timeline, and then Mr. Alex Tech logo. I'm gonna double click on the timeline name, so yours may just be timeline one, and that's gonna take us back to the timeline itself. But if you have a look at Compound Clip, my logo has got bigger and it's got the new title on it. But then what can you do with it? Well, once you're back onto your timeline, you can treat it as one single clip, which means you can add transitions to it, which will affect everything within the Compound Clip. You can transform it, you can color grade it, you can even open it up into Fusion. So here's my Compound Clip and let's just use the inspector. So I'm gonna zoom this out. And rather than having to juggle all the individual elements, I'm just zooming out the entire thing, the background, all the titles, and the logo. So I can just put it wherever I want. If I wanted to drop shadow on this, I could just open up my open effects from my effects library. I'm gonna find my drop shadow. We can drop that on there just once, and now we've got a nice drop shadow on our compound clip. Awesome, but what if you wanna get rid of it? Well, you can do that too. Again, it's really quick and easy. If for whatever reason you want to get rid of your compound clip and get all the individual elements back, simply right click on the compound clip on your timeline. You've got the option to decompose in place using clips only, and that will just restore that back to all the individual elements on the timeline. Now, the handy thing with this, if we have a look in our media pool, I've still actually got my Mr. Alex Tech logo compound clip, so I can still add that to any other part of my timeline as I need to. But are there any downsides? Well, there's one thing which kind of lets these compound clips down just a little bit, which I'll cover at the end of this video. But before we do, let's hop in and have a look at some really great examples of how to use these compound clips to make your life just a little bit easier. So this is quite a simple example. We've got this, we've got four layers. We've got PNG, text, an image, and a background just to warn people of the scammers which are in my comment section. Now I want to move this around. I want to be able to use this multiple times throughout the same project. So again, rather than having to select all the things individually, if we just highlight them all, right click, compound clip, we'll call this warning. Now we've got this real tidy warning clip rather than four individual things. And if I hold the alt key, give it a click to make a duplicate, I can just put this wherever I want on my timeline really quickly 
and easily so it pops out whenever we need it. Now, quick note about transitions. I've got that compound click there. If I was to grab a transition, try and put it on the end, I can't. It's just gonna go on the inside. I can't put it in the middle. And that's because we haven't got any handles. But all you want to do, right click on your compound clip, open it up in the timeline, and then all we're gonna do here, make everything longer than we need it. So I'm just gonna lengthen this out like so. We're gonna go back to our timeline. We can go back to our warning now. Then I'm gonna grab my trim edit tool just by clicking on this icon or I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard, roll the clip forwards. It doesn't actually matter because it's all exactly the same. That just gives us this handle on the edges. So now I can grab a transition, put it on there. No worries whatsoever. We'll move this one over, job done. Hey, I've got a quick message from this video sponsor, Squarespace. In today's world, pretty much everyone has the need for a website. Whether you're looking to start your own business, an online store, need somewhere to host your portfolio, or you just want to start writing a blog, Squarespace has everything you need. They've got a massive selection of really great looking and easy to use templates, plus essential tools like analytics, SEO tools, blogs, online stores, and even built-in email marketing. So if you are looking for a website and you fancy checking out Squarespace for yourself, simply head over to squarespace.com to start your free trial right now. And when you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Alex Tech to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain or simply use the code Mr. Alex Tech at checkout. Hmm. Next up, a simple face cam. So sticking with this same compound clip, I've got a new timeline here. I don't want to put a face cam over in the right hand side, but I want to jazz it up, give it a border, drop shadow, all that sort of fun stuff. So I'm going to grab my video, put this on top, and at the moment it's just covering the entire thing like so. Now what we want to do is just turn this into a compound clip. So I'm going to right click, compound clip, and we'll call this face cam. We're then going to right click again, and we're going to open in timeline. So what we're going to do with this, give it a click in the effects library, go to effects, grab a colored border, and we're just going to drop that on our face cam like so. Open up the inspector, go to the effects tab, and then we can just change the color to be whatever we want it to be. I'm going to go with a gray like so. Perfect, so we've got a face cam with our border applied. We're then gonna jump back to our main timeline. So I'm gonna go back to my timeline three by double clicking. Then we can give our compound clip a click. Using the inspector tools, we can simply transform, resize this, relocate it, put it in the corner like so. It's already got our border on it because our border is actually within the compound clip itself and job done. I wanna have a drop shadow on there. So I'm simply gonna go back to our open effects, find my drop shadow, drop that on our compound clip, and job done. If we wanted to, we could animate this in as well. So I'm gonna to go to my video transitions. Let's just find the push transition, which is a great one to use. We'll pop this on my compound clip, give it a click. In the inspector, I'm gonna use the push right, change the ease to in and out. Remember, if you're using transitions, if in doubt, in and out. And now if we hit play, we've got our face cam, pings in from the side with our drop shadow and our border. Easy peasy, done. Next one, moving and animating multiple things in one go. This is a lifesaver for me whenever I do any of my techie laptop style videos. So I've got this B-roll of this laptop and we've got a slow little pan. And then I've got three little text boxes with all the computer specs. Now I've had to do it as three separate ones because I want different sizes, this, that, and the other. And I want to be able to organize it to get it looking exactly as I like it. So what do we do here? We'll simply highlight all three of the text boxes, right click, and we're gonna create a new compound clip. I'll call this one Specs. And there we go. Now it's all in one little bundle. So what we're gonna do, give it a click in the inspector once again, in the transform, I'm just gonna add a keyframe at the beginning because that's in the right place. We're gonna use our playhead to go to the end of the clip. I'm gonna just change my position to about there. Now if we go to the beginning and hit play, all three of my titles will be moving in line with my laptop to give it a real nice, almost motion tracked effect. And we've done it all in one go, thanks to that compound clip. Simple, but what about something a little bit more creative? We can actually create a really funky looking Polaroid effect using the paper generator. I actually made a whole video about paper generators up here, but let me show you really quickly how to use a compound clip to make one of those. So we've got this image here, we want to look like a sort of Polaroid style thing. So we're gonna right click, new compound clip, give it a name, Polaroid, we're gonna right click and we're gonna open in new timeline. Now what I want to do for this, I'm gonna move it up a track. We're gonna zoom out a little bit, give us a bit more room. Then from within the effects library, we're gonna to go to generators, gonna scroll down and grab my paper from the fusion generators area. 
and put it underneath like so. And then we're very quickly just gonna hop into the inspector and go to cropping. And we're gonna crop this so it looks almost like a Polaroid. We're gonna do this really rough. We'll go something like that, and trim it down from the top as well. There we go, that looks about right. Now we can jump back to our main timeline. Let's just put something underneath so we can see exactly what we're doing. Now we've got this cool looking Polaroid effect. We're just gonna give it a click in the inspector. Let's just zoom it out a bit, rotate it a little bit, we'll move it over to the side. Once again, I'm gonna to go to my open effects. We'll drop a drop shadow on there. And there you go, we've got a really nice, simple looking Polaroid effect in no time at all using a compound clip. Next one, speeding up multiple clips. So I've got this clip of me and I've got a timer going in the top right hand corner, but I wanna speed everything up because it's currently in real time. So how do we do this? We highlight it all, right click, new compound clip, give it a name, and now that's all bundled in one. We don't even need to open it up this time, we're simply gonna give it a click in the speed change area within the inspector. Let's set this to 500%. And as you can see, it's not just my footage that's sped up, it's also the timer sped up the exact same amount. So it's a really great way of doing time lapses, timers, speed runs, anything like that. And for my next one, I heard you like transitions, so I'm gonna put your transitions on your transitions, nested transitions. So I've got these two clips here on my timeline and I'm just gonna drop a transition on there. So I'm gonna use the built-in circles one from the fusion transitions within the video transitions. And we're gonna drop that on there like so. And now we've got this transition. Then make sure your playhead is right on that edit point there. So right in the middle, like so. Then we're gonna highlight it all. Right click, new compound clip. Give it a name if needs be, like so. Then make a cut using a control B shortcut in the exact same point. So now we've got them cut once again, and now we can drop another transition on there. So now I'm gonna drop a drop warp. So now we've got the circles with a drop warp effect as well. If we wanted to do it again, playhead right in the middle, highlight, right click, compound clip, create, cut. Let's go find another one like camera shake. And now we've got the circles, the drop warp, and the camera shake, all the transitions in one go, giving us something that looks like that. So how great are they? So what's the negative? Well, the only real negative with compound clips is the fact that you can't unfortunately save them into power bins, which means they're not easily shared amongst projects. It would be great if you could save a compound clip to a power bin so it's always there, ready to pull off and drop on your timeline. But unfortunately, you can't do it just yet. Hopefully Blackmagic make a change to DaVinci Resolve so that you can do that in the future. But other than that, I think they're bloody marvellous, so let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Take it easy.